All right, welcome back to Big Country Politics. We are in the courthouse with Jim Hicks, the district attorney here in Taylor County, and thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. I enjoy and look forward to it. Well, thank you, sir. We we wanted to talk to you about there. There've been a lot of, of arrests lately, and I and I guess it's. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess there's always been the arrest, but there's been more attention paid to arrest having to do with online solicitation of a minor yes. and uh, it, you know child sex crimes. Uh, Abilene Police Department has a unit, cyber crimes unit, dedicated mm -hmm. to doing this every day, all day. Right. And uh, well, we just wanted to talk to you about the punishment side of things and. Uh, um, and I'll let you respond from there. What, wh where do we start? Well, and, and, and I'm really glad that you invited me to visit with you because what is so confusing and is what is also upsetting to me as a district attorney is uh, the punishment phase of a trial, whether it be a, a solicitation of a minor, sexual assault, or anything else is is in a lot of ways misunderstood. Yeah. Uh, and and you know as well as I do, as many times as we've visited, that uh, one of the hardest problems when this community has a question about a case or has a issue with a particular investigation is telling them I can't tell them anything. That's that's the most aggravating part of this job is because I, I'm statutorily bound. None of my lawyers can talk about a case while it's going on. But once the sentence is handed down, then there are uh, more uh, comments or, or issues raised about, well, why did this person get this amount of time or why didn't they get more or what have you, and, and, and the sentencing phase in the state of Texas has to be understood. A lot of people believe that everything that I do as their district attorney is at my recommendation or my insistence. And the sentencing phase couldn't be farther from the truth of that. Mm -hmm. uh, what we normally do in a, in a bulk of our cases is we'll make a plea recommendation. But in a sexual assault of a child or online solicitation cases, they're not going to accept our recommendation. Our recommendation is going to be put somebody that behaves that away, especially when a child's involved, uh, in prison as long as you possibly can. So we can only make a recommendation and then it's up to the defendant to accept or refuse that recommendation and my, nine times out of ten they will. They're not excited about going to prison and I'm not excited about reducing my rec. Mm -hmm. What happens thereafter is they have, or, or we both have the ability to have a jury trial, but they have, the defendant has the ultimate uh, choice as to who sentences them. The jury. The jury or the judge. Uh, and, and that is the most disappointing uh, fact for a lot of my line prosecutors. I know it is for me. For the 20 years I did this, uh, at one time uh, I was trying, uh, the, the defendant, the accused, was afraid of the jury. And they would go to the jury. And the judge was maxing these cases out at my request. Mm -hmm. But then uh, the, the turnaround was that on an online solicitation, uh, defendants chose a couple of juries to assess their punishment. And unfortunately for the state, unfortunately I believe for the community, some of those juries probated those cases. And, and that concerned me. Uh, Basically, you're saying those juries gave the defendant, yes. the charged person, probation. That's correct. And, and, and it concerned me in twofold because when, when they gave them probation, uh, I, I'm thinking uh, these individuals don't ever need to see the light of day, number one. And, and number two, uh, they will have the ability on probation to possibly reoffend. 
and 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 if you if you read the statistics on sexual assault predators, and you read the statistics on online solicitors, uh, the the offense is not only to talk about sexual activity online; it's to actually set up a meeting with underage kids mm -hmm. for uh, that conduct to actually occur. Mm -hmm. And and that that destroys me inside because. This person, statistically, this person that is going out online, and I'd say this to all parents, uh, check, check your kids' phones, check your kids' internet services, block them. Because these people that are going online statistically to meet up with underage children, and hopefully it's a federal or a state officer they're getting stung sure. by and not a child, but these people have already started offending minors. Or they are grooming a minor for sexual assault, or they are getting bolder as they make their communication to become sex offenders. That's why I've never thought that uh, probation was appropriate. The the one and and, and I, I don't ever take it away from the jury. The jury has a very hard decision to make sure. when they go to trial, but. The one thing that I've always heard from jurors that I've interviewed later is that they they have the misinformation, I guess it would be, that these predators are talking to law enforcement. Therein uh, lies a theory that there's no victim. And and if they, you know, we have to have a majority, I mean, it doesn't, go by majority, it goes by unanimous vote. But if you don't have unanimous vote, you won't get them sent off to prison. And, and I've heard jurors tell me before, but you didn't have a victim. Well, these are not victimless crimes. Whether it's one of my uh, cyber crimes in detectives from APD, or whether it's one of my cyber crimes uh, detectives from the Taylor County Sheriff's Department, these are crimes that would be occurring to a minor in another medium if not for the fact that the detective had already spotted him and was working on it. They'd have been doing it this anyway. They'd been doing this anyway. Uh, and in a lot of what, what, what I try to explain to my juries, a, a lot of the educational process, not only for preventative, to watch your kids, and, 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 and I'm not saying all kids are doing this. I'm just saying some kids are more prone to the con man attitude, if you will, yeah, than yeah. others. But but one of the informations that, that we need to get across is these individuals are very bold. Very bold in the sense that they hide under the the, the secret of, of uh, the internet and, and uh, Wi-Fi groups and uh, all kinds of different uh, cell phones. I mean, all kinds of different things that they don't think, uh, for whatever reason, they'll be identified. Mm -hmm. And and if they are identified, they're only identified by one particular child. And, and I've tried a number of these cases, even unfortunately with real victims. And. Uh, my victims have ranged from six years old to 12 years old, and, and they always, the offender always has the aggravating idea, it, it just burns me, they always have this aggravating idea that if I get caught, my victim will be so embarrassed, so humiliated, that they'll never tell. And let me stop you right there. We've got to go to commercial because I feel like we just scratched the surface. Sure. And then we're going to pick it up right there where you, you're saying that the victim is, is, might be afraid to come forward. Sure. All right. Well, we'll come back and talk about that in just a few minutes here on Big Country Club.